We'll get mom up here and we'll get things going. Get logged in with our YouTube audience. And here we are. It is July 16th, 2023. It's week 154. And it is spinach and greens. And I must say, we have lots of those. The size of them. Get them in here and you want to be able to see them pass. Mom and I. And I think one of the most exciting things about, you know, it's a National Spinach Day too coming up. So we pop by, eat your spinach. Um, but the thing about this time of year is these are all greens that are growing with the local farmers, right, Mom? We were yesterday at the market down in Hillsboro. Um, Angela, one of our favorite farmers to go see at Funday Farms Local Harvest. And look at this beautiful Swiss chard. Hopefully you can see the colors there. See that beautiful pink. And then there's like yellow when it's kind of an orange. And there's even some kind of white on this side. And that is a beautiful green that grows. And we're, this is a really simple preparation that we're gonna do with this particular green because it doesn't need a lot. It tastes really wonderful itself. It does need to be cooked. You can eat the baby kale or kale. And now I'm calling it kale. Swiss chard. Um, I like it in salads. It's very pretty because of the nice colors as you see in there. Um, what we like to do with this one and we're gonna do today is we're gonna steam it and then we're gonna season it. So we're gonna put a little bit more. We see we've got there, Joan's joining us. She's gonna get her camera off and her mute on. Um, and this is some beautiful bok choy. And it's funny because we did try to grow bok choy this year. <laughs> The slugs didn't like our backyard with the bok choy. They loved our <laughs> bok choy. That's right. Good point, Mom, right? They, they, loved, liked, they loved it. We didn't even get to eat it. Um, but technically, it never grew more than this tall. So this is some beautiful bok choy. Um, again, really lovely to have it stir fried. And it's great in salads. We like to have it sometimes just barbecued. We'll barbecue it, grill it, and eat it. It is wonderful. Bok choy is a great one because it's got a really solid base. So you can use it in like coleslaws. So yes. it's a little bit, yeah. And stir fry is a little bit heavier green, kind of a little bit in the cabbage family in how sturdy those leaves are. So beautiful local bok choy that we're going to have. Of course, the lead spinach. Um, we do have baby spinach that we're using today. And again, there's just spinach growing everywhere. It's an easy thing to grow at home. I didn't grow any spinach this year, um, but I think I will next year. But it's, um, you can get it all the local grown spinach. So throughout Atlantic Canada, you'll find right now, there's an extraordinary amount of different types. Some of the spinach, remember mom, the other week, we got it, the leaves were as big as my head. Yeah. So they were huge. I particularly like the baby spinach. It's um, a mild and it's great for salads. It's also good if you want to cook it down and use it in other mixtures. We're going to be putting this into some stuffed mushrooms today. Hi, Shinobu. Hi, Shinobu. So the other lettuce thing we're going to bring in, we've got a few more kinds. It's great for greens. Good morning. Good to see you. Nobu um, had a nice tour in Prince Edward Island for a few weeks, and uh, I'll be looking forward to hearing some of those stories. Uh, to just, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, I, the most, the best, the best is a red ground and a green farm and a very beautiful uh, sea and the sky. And uh, a lot of flower, yeah, very beautiful thing, a lot. And uh, I met uh, a lot of uh, musical, uh, Anne of Green Gables, Anne, of, Anne and Gilbert is very nice musical. I very, I was very fun, and, and uh, but a little miss uh, student my classmate and teacher uh, but in two weeks a little a little bit long time uh, um, 
I want to come back. <laughs> I have no doubt, but thank you for sharing, yeah. Shinobu. So for our audience, Shinobu is uh, here in Canada from Japan, and she was very excited to see Anne of Green Gables. Many of our Japanese and Asian students, they study it in their school systems. So it's something that's a story that is beautiful, just like our childhood here in Atlantic Canada. Um, so it's wonderful to take those visits. I also know that Shinobu ate some great food while she was in Prince Edward Island. So these are some beautiful lettuce greens. I particularly like this purple lettuce. Um, the flavor, it is sweet, it's bright, but we've got a few different kinds of just regular lettuce in here. And isn't it beautiful? This is a nice thing about this time of year. Each lettuce tastes a little bit different. And uh, now she's got a little PowerPoint we're gonna look at after that's gonna show a little bit of the different types of greens. But I'm sure around the globe, there are many different types of greens that you have in your countries. For our Zoom room, we've got Sammy coming in from Jordan. Um, in the chat box, we would love to hear anybody writing if there's different greens that you have from your country that maybe you've seen here or you eat differently. So it's always great to learn those. I was having dinner with my friend Elena recently and she made a beautiful Sorrel soup. And we've used Sorrel and we just haven't used it in a while. And that's another great herb. So, whoops, that's gonna tip right over from my unbalanced bowl. So in this pan, we've got, this is one of my favorite greens. And it's funny, right, mom? You prefer the greens to the beets. So look at the size of these and try to get them hold up so you can get it into the picture. Here, look at that. Amazing. These are beet greens. And I'm going to hold up one of them. We're a little bit generous. Look at this. There's a, there's a decent sized beet on the end of that one. But I've washed these up really well. I am going to trim off just mm. these, these ends here, and as I've often said, you can take your trusty kitchen scissors, and I'm just gonna cut the ends off, and there's a little baby bead on there. I like leaving that little baby bead that's on the end because it's delicious, and you definitely wanna taste that. So one of the ways that we're gonna cook up these beet greens today is I like to keep the nutrients because the thing about greens, there's a little one. <laughs> Um, the greens have a lot of health. Um, so any of your green leafy vegetables, as you always hear, eat your green leafy vegetables, iron, uh, riboflavin, a lot of things that we didn't, we don't get from a lot of um, meats and other things. So eat your green leafy vegetables is the story on that one. And yes. um, when there's colors, we get another guest coming in. I have to ask everybody to hit me. When you're coming in, that would be great. If not, sometimes we get an echo. So there we go. We've got all those beet greens trimmed up. And I've already washed them. Thanks, Mom. I've already washed them really well. Because we want to make sure they're nice and clean. Um, one of the organic farmers that we get these from and they really bring them to the market fairly cleaned when they get there. So we just give a little extra clean. Sammy, I see Sammy's giving a heart there. Hopefully Sammy's tried beet greens. But you're going to see this end is a little thicker, right? So those are some of my favorite part when these cook down. But what we're going to do with those, I should have grabbed the steam pot. We're going to put these into a steam pot. And the reason why I like steaming my greens, a lot of my greens, is I'm going to keep most of, thanks mom, mom's got this great pot, the good size pot. There's the insert, so the water is in the bottom. You can see all the holes. So, because when we steam these, which is very interesting, anybody who has cooked spinach knows this. <laughs> when you cook that spinach down, this much will go in and half that amount comes back out. Right. Right. Mom's laughing here. So we'll show you that in a second. I'm just curling those around and we're going to fit those into the steam pot. How long do you think these are going to steam for, Mom? 
Mm, maybe 10 minutes. Yeah, 10, maybe 10, 12 minutes. Yeah. This is the other one. So that beautiful Swiss chard. Don't you love the colors of that? Look at that. It's just beautiful. I, again, it's huge. We're going to take this Swiss chard and I'm also, I'm just going to break it in half because it doesn't need to be fancy on how it's cut, but we do want to get all those leaves in there. Then I'll give this another twist. And then just what I'm going to do with these little ends. And as you can see, look at the beautiful colors. These are delicious to eat, but I'm just going to trim them a little bit from when the farmer had cut them yesterday morning. And I'm going to trim those little edges off. And then those almost look like a stalk of celery, don't they, Mom? Yeah. They're so big. Angela, they're great. Swiss chard. Look at that. It almost looks like a celery stalk. So we cut these up, and we're going to put these into the bottom of the pot because they're going to take a little longer to cook than the leaves. The leaves. The leaves. So we're going to make sure that those harder ones are at the bottom. So let's show them, Mom. Look at this pot. All of those are stuffed into it. And it's going to be like the magic pot. So I'm going to give that to mom. So she's going to put that burner on a medium heat, medium to high. We want to get the water boiling. And then she's going to turn it down. And you'll notice that we didn't put any seasoning at all. It's just water in the bottom of that pot. Any steam pot that you have would work. And um, we'll keep an eye on that. Yeah. So it won't take long. When we those come out of the pot, Mom and I are going to show you our favorite way to eat these. The wonderful thing is, is you can you can prepare them in a lot of different applications, but that's probably one of the simplest and the most delicious. So one of the things Mom's going to be making, I'm going off to Nova Scotia this afternoon. I have to go down. Let me get that burner on if you don't mind, Mom. This one? Yeah, actually, we're going to use a smaller one. Oh, no, you can use that one. I feel like I'm short on burners today. Um, so in this pan, we're going to make some beautiful Asian lettuce wraps. I've made them before. I see Heidi's joining us from the Dominican. Um, I love making this recipe. It's very simple. I did marinate the pork last night. One thing I always like to do is this, this dish is even better when your pork has had a chance to marinate. The nice thing about joining us on Sunday mornings is when mom and I <clears throat> make some of our marinades, we'll get to eat them later. Mom, we had this pork last night in a noodle bowl. In a noodle, it was delicious. It is really fantastic. So I'm just going to, we've got a pork loin that's been cut into little cutlets. So they're, I would say a centimeter and a half in thickness. So there's going to be able to get a nice sear. So, oh, they smell, they smell absolutely delicious, but I want to hold it up. So hopefully you can see the seasoning on there. So what I put in, what oil in this? just a little bit, mom, please. And the other thing is, is I took these out about 30 minutes ago. So the, my pork has, was in the refrigerator. So I don't want to put cold pork in a hot pan or it won't cook properly. So just a little reminder, these are up to room temperature. It's going to set them behind. That'll take a minute for that pan to get up to get for that pan to get nice and hot anyways, mom. So what I put in to the marinade is really quite easy. I use this um, coconut soy sauce substitute versus a regular soy sauce. Um, I like it because it's very low sodium. And one of the things mom and I try to watch is how much salt we intake um, when we are eating processed foods. So this is a nice one. You can use soya sauce, any soya sauce will do. Just remember you don't need a lot. So you're just putting it so it coats over. You're, you are going to use a little bit of fresh cracked pepper. The other thing I use is some fresh ginger. Now, I buy this crushed, freeze-dried ginger, which means, ooh, <laughs> forget about ginger. That'll clear your airway for sure. So I took about, so depending on how much you want, for, I made six 
small pork chops. Each one of those mini pork chops is enough for someone to have in a lettuce wrap. And I put about a tablespoon of this and a tablespoon of fresh minced ginger or ginger and garlic, listen to me. About the same amount of ginger and garlic. And as I said, pepper. And then the other thing that I do, and we've got that beautiful soy sauce, is once they're all laid out flat, I took and I used my maple sugar, a little bit of the maple sugar, and I put it across. So you get the sweet and the sour, right, mom? Right. And then that it the, the sugar helps cut a little bit of the strength from the ginger that's in there. And it really does give it a nice balance. So we're going to cook, sear those off and cook those through because those are what's going to be chopped with our beautiful romaine lettuce wraps. Um, and you can use different types of lettuce. I often use a little lettuce. It's a little head and it's called a Boston lettuce or small leaf lettuce. And, they're, and it comes out with little leaves with our little cups. I can't really use this lettuce for a wrap because you really wouldn't be able to fit anything in these leaves, right? So that's the wonderful thing about nature is nature has given us lettuce in many formats. So, and I really like to serve this recipe with friends and have it out. Um, I'm doing this so mom can have it this afternoon. She might have a friend over, but we'll be able to fill all those little cups up with that nice fork. And then we're gonna top that just with some fresh green onions because really the pork and everything in it, and then usually a few little crushed peanuts we'll put inside of that. Um, I'm not making the Vietnamese sauce and I wish we had one of my, my Vietnamese friends on here, but oftentimes I'll just top it with a nice Vietnamese dipping sauce because again, the lettuce and the fresh pork are already taste delicious. So mom's got that cooking. The next thing we're gonna get on the way is spinach is amazing in things. So I don't know if anybody wants to put in there. Some people might put spinach in their smoothies, putting spinach in all kinds of different things. And that's a really great thing. So what I have here, and I love mushrooms. So what you're gonna see here is a plate of mushrooms. I have these beautiful, quite large white mushrooms. You know, see that size? And what I have done is I've got mushrooms stuck in my hands here. I've carved out the inside. So that makes a great cup. If you remember a few weeks back, I did those with the lobster and then remember? Oh yeah. But we didn't have mushrooms this big. No. These are much bigger than last time. So we're quite excited. Mom's frying that um, pork, but one of the things we always watch is we usually put a timer on. So now that the temperature's up, she's oh. gonna make sure she puts a timer on that for about one minute either side. And now the steam is coming out of the pot that has our Swiss chard and our beet greens in it. So those are steaming away and uh, that pork smells delicious, mom. So going back to our mushrooms. So over here in this pile is the part that I curved out of the middle of the mushroom. So I'm gonna keep that because it's delicious and I'm gonna fry that up. So I've got all the mushroom caps here. And then over here, I've got a few other just diced mushrooms. So I'm just going to show you how we carve those mushrooms out. The trick with the mushrooms, to be honest with you, is making sure you have a nice firm mushroom to start with. And a good size mushroom makes this task a little bit easier. Um, but I really love my mushrooms. So what we're going to do is we're going to gently take that stem out and I'm going to dice that stem up because I don't want to waste that. And then on the inside, I'm going to take a spoon and I just use a regular spoon and I'm gently going to put that around the edges 
and what will happen is, and I'm going to dig it into a little bit. And if you see, there's the rest of the stem and some mushroom that came out. And then usually inside are the little ribs of the mushroom and they're a little black. Those are, that's just the color. They're beautiful. That's how nature made them. I'm keeping an eye here while I'm doing that. You want to be careful because it's easy to make your spoon go through the wall of the side of the mushroom. So be a little gentle with this exercise. I have tried to show some kids how to do it and they're usually um, not as delicate. So, and if you've only bought 10 mushrooms, you want to be careful. So I've slowly got my spoon around that. And there we go. And hopefully you can see now, I'll stick my finger in that. There's quite a bit of space inside there. So that's gonna be where our beautiful spinach and feta cheese dip is gonna go. So they're easy to do and they're wonderful for friends. I'm gonna be bringing these with me to Nova Scotia for my good friends, Donna, Corey, and their two sons to have dinner with them tonight. So I am gonna show you one of these but I won't be finishing those off till later today. But one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna take that hot frying pan my mom has. Oh, mom, those are perfect. And we're gonna add into it all of that. So this is all the mushroom that I carved out of the insides. We do not wanna waste that. So this is where I love this recipe because you're really not wasting at all. And she's got that pan fairly hot. We're just gonna make sure there, she just washed at the bottom of it. Put a little bit more olive oil in there, right on there, mom. And I'm gonna give her these mushrooms. I'm gonna put them in her pan. There you go, mom. And we're gonna get them Ooh, okay, smell those beet greens. And I came around here. And I'm just gonna give you the green onions. So we're putting those. So one of the things we're gonna have, we've got some garlic scapes here. And we've got some green onions. So what I'm doing, mom, you might want to turn that down just a little bit, mom. Yeah. We're, I'm going to give my mom, she's ahead of me, <laughs> some of these garlic scapes, which I'm just going to dice up a little bit here. And you could put fresh garlic in these. Um, that would be if you don't have garlic scapes, because I appreciate um unless you're where they're growing fresh garlic, these are not necessarily accessible, but you would just dice up some nice fresh garlic, fairly small, because remember this is going to be going a stuffing in the mushrooms. So we don't want any big chunks of anything. And I'm just getting these diced up and I'll give them to mom and we're going to dice up some green onion. I like to use green onion because it's mild, and once she gets this mixture mixed up quite well, we're gonna be adding some spinach into that frying pan. So we're gonna show you what that looks like because when you fry spinach, it's the same theory. It's like spinach and mushrooms disappear by about half when you're cooking them. So be mindful of that when you're buying your quantities to cook because they do cook down, as we say. Here we go, Mom. So the mushrooms are in there, they smell delicious. You love that woody smell. And all I'm doing right now is taking a green onion and I'm core and just cutting it in half and giving my running my knife through it so I can get that into a nice small size. Because again, these are gonna go into the stuffing that's going to go into those beautiful mushrooms and we want that to cook down. It's um, We're going to use feta cheese in ours and I'll be honest with you, it's because I had some on hand. I often like to make this stuffed recipe with cream cheese um, and you can get lots of dairy-free cheeses. Oh, don't go to uh, another few minutes. Mom was just checking on our Swiss chard, remember? We have our Swiss chard and our beet greens steaming away. I must say my kitchen smells so fresh. I can, it's like 
different herbs, different onions, different meats. It's just absolutely amazing on how uh, beautiful fresh vegetables. You're also gonna notice today, there's not a lot of spices because I'm using a lot of fresh herbs and fresh herbs really add that extra fresh seasoning every month. A little bit of salt and pepper in there, please. I'm just going to put some cracked salt and pepper in with those. It's right in front of them. Those of us that join us a lot know we're always looking for the salt and pepper. This time I had it right there. So I'm going to hold that pork up so everybody can see. My mother got a beautiful sear on it. I think it's perfectly cooked. We're letting that cool down just a little bit because it's really important when you take hot meat off any burner, grill, whatever it may be, don't cut into it right away. Wait at least two minutes if you can. So set your plate down, get your other things, and then wait for it. And the reason is if you cut into that because it's hot and those meat fibers are still bubbling, most of the juice will run out. And your first few bites are delicious and then maybe a little dry. So just let your meat rest a little bit. And we want to keep all that beautiful flavor in there for our lettuce wrap. That's going to be going into. So I'm going to show you mom's pan here. Excuse me, mom. Behind you. So this is, oh my goodness, it's, it really does smell incredible. If you can see that, that's the combination of the mushrooms the onions and the garlic scapes with that little bit of salt and pepper. And remember how, look how nice and fine that is because we want to have it nice and fine. That's going to be going in for our stuffing. That looks absolutely perfect, mom. So I'm going to give mom, I'm going to take a handful of spinach and I'm only, I'm just going to run my knife through it a little bit because what mom's going to do now is we're going to put this into the pan with the cooked onions and mushrooms. And it is key that you cook the mushrooms and onions first. This is a delicious combination together, but you do have to make this recipe in the right order. <laughs> because the step that mom is doing right now by cooking the mushrooms down, it adds some nice flavor. She's got it on a medium heat so that, you know, they cook through properly. And now I'm just, like I said, I'm gonna take this handful it's just the spinach and I just diced it up. And we're gonna put that into mom's pan. And I might need a little bit more because as we said, spinach cooks down quite easily to make sure we have enough for our mushrooms. So in this bowl is my feta. So you don't need a lot of the feta cheese. So I'm also gonna use just a little bit of mayonnaise. I want to be able to give it just a little extra binding and stickiness. So for this amount, I'm doing about six mushrooms, but a tablespoon of mayonnaise. And when mom brings that mixture, it's going to mix in that warm mixture with the cheese. And I want to stir it quickly. And then that's what's going to go in. And we're going to show you to stuff our mushrooms. Cooking down, we just show them a part way cook down and up a month. Yeah. See already? Look at the difference in that. And that handful of spinach, it cooks down so quickly. I remember a story mushrooms and spinach. So it must be the, the, the pairing of them when um, I was cooking dinner with for my dad one year. And I had a pan of mushrooms that was overflowing. And then we were cooking dinner for three of us. And he said, who's going to eat all those mushrooms? And about 15 minutes later, he came back and the pan had cooked down by half. And he then came back and said, who ate the mushrooms? Because <laughs> he thought I was eating them while I was cooking them. But it was just cooking down. So love that story about my dad. So the salad I'm going to make tonight, so mom's finishing that, I'm going to just roll over um, into this beautiful salad I'm going to make tonight. So we've got these fresh greens. This is going to be coming with me to Nova Scotia. 
The other thing that I'm going to put into this, what's going on, Mom? I think they're done. I actually think they're done. So look at that. Yeah. We're going to switch back and finish those mushrooms off. All right. I'll come back to that. Those were fast. Yeah. Good job, Mom. I'll take that pan over here. So she's just going to organize a few things. And look at that, my friends. We're going to go back. We'll finish the other salad in a moment. Right. Thank you, Mom. Yep. Got it. Um, do thank you. <laughs> Just need the spoon. Smells amazing. I wish you could smell it, but some we often say we we I wish we had smell vision <laughs> so that you could smell how delicious that is. One of the things, three years, it's our three-year anniversary coming up. Next week's hot dogs, by the way, and I love hot dogs because that's a great global thing. Um, but then on the 30th is going to be our three-year birthday, and we're going to have some fun surprises. So in here, we have our mayo, and we have our cheese. And just going to move this down a little bit. There we go. And you can see the nice ingredients in the pan here. And I am just going to put those right into that dish. Oh, and, and I tell you, the smell is when the heat hits the cold. Wow. So we're going to mix that up. I'm not going to lie. I think I just want to eat a bowl of this. And I, hopefully you can see that the feta is going to mix beautifully through, through. Feta has a little bit of a salty brininess to it. So I didn't add a lot of extra salt and pepper. Mom, you put some pepper and salt when she was cooking. Yeah. But I haven't added a whole lot of extra. Hold on, my God, that looks good. Okay. So there's the stuffing. So we're going to grab. And I'm just going to show you kind of one of these because, again, I'm going to mainly stuff them later. But you know I'm going to be leaving one for my mother because there's no way... She, she's behind me smiling. I would be making this recipe and taking it all with me to Nova Scotia. So there we go. Kind of get that up. You can see that beautifully stuffed mushroom. All those wonderful flavors are in there. So, and, and what you'll see is once I do them, and of course I'm going to leave it to you, mom. There we go. There's mom's. Two beautiful mushrooms. They've got a really nice bite each. So they're a wonderful size appetizer or they're great if you wanna put maybe three on a side dish on a plate with someone. And now what I'm gonna do with those is we would bake those in the oven and they would bake in the oven for about 15 minutes on a high heat oven. So we just need to get that through. Or if you really wanted to, you could grill those on a barbecue on a low, I would probably use a grill mat with that just so that the bottom of the mushrooms, but you want to be able to just like, cause all your ingredients are cooked on the inside. And remember you can eat raw mushrooms. So it's one of those fantastic recipes. And I just feel like I want to eat one like that, <laughs> but we'll get those cooked up afterwards. And um, again, one of those beautiful dishes and you saw how quickly we did that in such a short time frame. I can honestly tell you the thing that takes the longest is carving all the mushrooms out. <laughs> That's the task that takes, takes the longest on that one. The spinach and all that stuff. Or the oh, excellent. Um, do you want to get maybe some of each in, in one little bowl each and we'll show them? I'm just going to grab a bowl out of a high cupboard for my mom. There we go. So I'm going to get Bobby to put just a little bit of beet greens in one bowl and some of the Swiss chard in a separate bowl so we can have a look. And we're going to show you our favorite way growing up as kids. This is how we always eat these things. So while she's getting that ready, I need to make sure that we have, yes, a trusty ingredient we're going to need in the fridge to complete that top. Two things we're going to need. Now, very traditional with a lot of things. I like to eat spinach 
The same way, again, I'll either steam my spinach or now I'll fry it in a frying pan. One of the things I would say to all the people listening is I never boil because you're boiling a lot of your nutrients and the good things out. And I'm going to get Nasha to share here in a couple of minutes a little presentation that I have just talking a bit about why we should eat more greens. So one of the things I'm adding with this nice leafy salad that I'm going to be taking to Nova Scotia because we want to get that one done is I'm going to be putting some arugula. So this I did pick in my backyard. You'll see, I just picked it there about an hour ago. See all these nice little leaves. You really just, it's an interesting lettuce the way that it grows. So I've washed that off and there I'll pick off those nice arugula leaves. Oftentimes it's called rocket. So if those people who watch Jamie Oliver cook, he'll say, put some rocket, some rocket. You can really see on that leaf the interesting shape. I love this lettuce. It's peppery. It definitely, mom's going to stand beside me. Come on, don't do that. She's like my teenager. I call her my teenager because she's just like a teenager. And there was a moment. I can smell it. Yeah. So mom doesn't love rocket. Not really. She's <laughs> behind me. She doesn't mind a little bit though. No, I don't mind a little bit. So when I'm putting a little bit in a salad like this is probably That's okay. Right. But I will eat a whole bowl of it. <laughs> and the reason is it's peppery and if you just even think of caking a pepper mill in peppercorn, it has that type of a bite. Yes. Right? But we do love it. Um, I, I love it more. So we're gonna put <laughs> we're gonna put this in here. And I love this shape one. I have to look at the That's reason so why it's also called rocket. Um, but it's just enough in this toss salad to add some of those extra flavors through. It blends really well in, so you won't, we could have a contest to see if you could pick the rocket out. Um, but what's gonna be really nice, and we're gonna talk about the dressing I'm gonna put with this salad, and I've chose something really sweet to complement some of those bitter lettuces and things that I put into it. So mom, you've grown up eating all these greens your whole life, haven't you? I have. So we should, we should put a good size bowl in here. So. See in this bowl, that is, and we should have showed you the cover of that pot. Can you bring that pot over, Mom? The pot? The pot, just take the cover off. Is that there? It's not that hot anymore. Yeah, there's not much left. It is it. still hot. All right, you take the cover and leave that for a second. Mom and I are going to get a facial. Yeah. I'm going to show you the pot because if you remember, it was stuffed to the very top of how it cooked down. Now keep in mind, mom took a little bit of Swiss chard and some beet greens out. So let's look at that beautiful Swiss chard. You can see the nice leaves, that the, the nice pink and the yellow. And really our favorite way to eat this quite simply, and we're not gonna use all that. So let me put some back in the pot. There we go. Because I'm gonna have a snack of this right now. I was being generous. She was very generous. We appreciate that. Because, Mom, don't you want me to eat my greens? Oh, definitely. <laughs> right? That's what we do as parents. So what I'm going to do here is, yeah, can you give me a knife? So ingredients, you want to grab the salt and pepper? It's the simplest ingredients to, for this at all. We're going to take a nice little bit of butter, and we're going to let that butter melt across, which, of course, it's hot and steamy. And then the next thing we're going to do with some fresh cracked pepper. That was definitely mine. Mom was channeling Michelle and her pepper quantity in that one. Perfect, Mom. So, and then the last thing that's our favorite ingredient to do is, is just a really good, and in this is, we keep this in our containers, we buy big ones, apple cider vinegar. Um, you can use any vinegars, actually, really, and a nice seasoned vinegar would be good. But we just use apple cider as our favorite. And I have to tell you, I'm excited to take a bite of that. We really should have cut it though. I'm probably gonna have a hard, a hard time without stuffing a giant piece in my mouth. Yeah. So there we go. There we go. 
So for me, my compliments to the farmer. <laughs> yeah. And the chef. And now. The chef. Mom yeah. cooked it perfectly. You don't want to overcook it. I'll cut it over there. I'll trade you for the meat greens. Mom will switch bowls and have a taste test. Now, the beet greens are fine. Warning about beet greens. There will be a lot of dye that comes off of the beet greens. And I guess really should have had these cut. Can't really demo this at all, Mom. Okay. Where's your knife? So we're having a hard time here. So we probably should have cut these. So anyhow. I don't have a knife. Mom's getting me to look for a knife that I don't have. So let me just get this here. Here we go. They're nice and soft. I can cut them with my fork, sort of. So look at the beautiful bee greens. You see the color? I love the purple stems. Here's one of my, one of those beautiful beets that was in there. What I always say is watch with that one. Um, not that you're going to hurt anything, but the, there's a lot of dye that comes out of the beet. Eat it. It's great for you. But you'll see the differences, all the different color around that plate. I'm not going to do anything differently than I did before. But a little bit of nice butter on that to melt across. And of course, when they're hot, it really just melts right across there. Same thing again. I'm gonna put a little bit of my apple cider vinegar, and then we're gonna top that with some salt and pepper. And I, these are probably my, I love Swiss char, but if I chose between the two, I would choose the beet greens. The funny part is, as mom comes around here beside me, she would try probably choose the Swiss chard, wouldn't you? Yes. So this is good that her and I are going to switch. We're each going to snack on the bowl that we would have wanted. So I just want to be careful and hold this up. Actually, Mom, show them those beet greens in the bowl. Or, or sure that I'm going to drain this water. Um, so we're not so dangerous. I'm going to show them the water. When I drained it out, the water was purple. Perfect. Thank you, Mom. I'm right behind you. There we go. So I drained the water out of the steam pot. Oh, my mom's going to feed me. She's going to have a bite herself. How are those? I feed you when you're 10 years old. I don't think I'll feed you now. <laughs> so look at the size of that pot. Do you remember? I can see I can see Shinohu nodding. Thanks, Shinohu. I love seeing your beautiful face. But that was full right to the top. We could not stuff anything more into that pan. And now that has cooked down to that. Yeah. So when you're deciding how much you're buying for the amount of people you're cooking for, remember greens can be tricky because <laughs> you never know. But let's talk about some fun stuff with greens while I have a bite and have my snack. Nasha, do you want to pull the um, PowerPoint up and we'll just have a look at some facts about some of these? And then we're gonna finish off with our last salad and watermelon salad dressing. So good. I know. These are good. So, wow. I have to tell you, that exceeded my expectations on how good that beet was. The beet was extremely sweet. Nash, I don't know if you're able to put that full screen, um, but the, oh, thank you. I want to, like, when we chose greens today, yes, we're cooking up a few things with the salad that we're going to have tonight. We're going to be doing a nice marinated steak. But spinach and greens are extremely healthy. So it is full of the best nutrients that you can have, a folate, vitamin A, vitamin K. Remember, most greens have that in it. But it also helps with the alkalization in your body. Anybody that's working to, to balance their blood pressure, fantastic to add a regular into their diet on that. Um, osteosclerosis, anybody with cardiovascular, which of course leads into that heart. It really also helps with digestion. So people are looking for what are the good things to eat. Our bodies were intended to eat all these beautiful leafy greens. We also know um, 
that it also helps to lower blood sugars. And I think that's one's really, really popular. And I'm not going to lie. I like the last two on the list. Anti-aging. I'm going to eat more spinach or Popeye, right? He pops his can of spinach and would go. But strengthening the eyes. So isn't that a great one? Want to flip over the next side there, Nasha? Um, and it was rawforbeauty.com. I love searching some of these websites to get some statistics. I didn't cook with kale today, but kale is an extreme favorite of mine. Um, I like the baby kale. My mother loves kale salad. We buy a lot of that. And this is a really unique fact because, again, it's the same thing when it's um, it's got a lot of calcium in it, which is really. So there's more calcium than milk. So for our parents out there, we know we have a lot of families that tune in with us. Just remember, if your kids don't want to drink their milk, we can get some kale in there. Kale and spinach are great for vitamin C, and they're also fantastic to throw in your smoothies. So just a couple of other things to remember, and we want to make sure that that is what we're looking at on a regular basis and the health of that. Go ahead, Nasha. Next slide. Romaine lettuce. I apologize, guys. I have to turn my phone. Someone messaging me in the middle of this. Um, this is the romaine lettuce. So I love romaine. And I have to say, romaine lettuce, I have the best relationship with now. And the reason for that is when, when my really good friend Jacqueline, she comes in and cooks our good friend from Vietnam, and Christina, they use romaine lettuce in Japanese. In Japanese. Look at that. Vietnamese and Japanese culture a lot. I had really just been using lettuce for salads, right? Now we put it in our soups. We use it in a lot of other things. And romaine lettuce is one of those great things. And again, today we're, we're making those pork lettuce wraps that we're going to finish off with out of that romaine lettuce. I also find it's one of the lettuces that's most readily available. And right now, the ones that our farmers are growing are huge. If you remember last week. <laughs> It was unbelievable in size. And as you can see there, it's got incredible amounts of vitamins and minerals that we all need in us. That Boston lettuce you see at the top, that was that one I said I love for making lettuce cups with. Arugula we talked about. And it's great because arugula is often called an herb, but it's a lettuce. So that's a fun one because it doubles as an herb like this um, pesto that I have here that we're going to talk about in a second as we wrap up. I love, so down in the bottom, you'll see the Belgian and the curly endive. Those are beautiful, soft. I, I think that there's a lot more of those type of lettuces that he's, I, we see used in a lot more Asian cooking. But I will give a viva to my friends in Italy for that beautiful radicchio at the bottom. It is one of my favorite lettuces to use. Um, and again, it's beautiful, it's rich, and it also has a little bit of a bite to it. And I think there might be one more slide there, Nasha. And um, just to finish off, look how beautiful all of those things look. So the lettuce wraps in the cups I was talking about have a good look that you're seeing there. Today's won't be quite as fancy but we're certainly going to be making those great. And there's those beautiful rodicchio that I love so much. Thanks for sharing that, Nasha. Hopefully everybody's inspired today to go and to use some more greens. Use some more greens in their day-to-day -day life so that they can be enjoying things. Um, so we're going to be sitting here. Mom finished off her greens. How are your greens? Oh, delicious. Delicious, delicious. So we've got some, I'm going to get you to get a little plate and put him on because we're going to do up a lettuce wrap. So I'm going to cut mom's pork that she cooked. I might add perfectly cooked pork, mom. Good. We will do a taste test. Do you want the lettuce on that? will be a compliment. Woo. So the two chefs on that one. So. We're going to build I wish I could, our little lettuce wraps. So what I'm going to be doing in here is because I cut 
the pork into strips. It's like my lettuce wraps rolling around on my plate. Here we go. Just sort of lay the strips down. Oh, here we go, that's a better angle. Lay the strips down on the inside. Remember, you're making these into small bites. It's not about someone eating all of it. Um, and uh, well, really you could do it all in one bite. It's sort of the goal that you wanna have with someone, but you don't want it to be so overwhelming that it's too much in one. So what I'm gonna top this with is a couple of easy things. So I'm putting a little, remember, I don't need lettuce on top because I have lettuce on the bottom. So I'm going to put a couple of green onions in there. And normally I would have like probably a, thank you, mom, a peanut sauce. We could do a little bit of a peanut sauce. But what I'm going to do is just a teeny little drizzle. There we go. Of that, that Vietnamese dip. And then what we're going to do, <laughs> I just knocked it over. I think everybody even saw me knock it over is I'm topping it with some peanuts. I gotta get my onions back on top. Ruining my display picture on this one, everybody. And that is how simple those lettuce wraps are. And I pass that over to mom. I'll cut you an extra piece of pork to try here, mom. Okay. Look at that. Whoa! And, and we broke it. What's that? I caught it in the other She caught it in her other hand. You couldn't quite see on camera. That was one of those Food and misses where she went to eat it and missed it and then caught it in my head. <laughs> Could have been a good slow mo. We need a picture of that. Yeah. She was about to fold it and eat it. I'm telling you, she was walking over. So we'll get her to get a good picture of that. Um, we're going to be having those beautiful to have later. As I said, mom cooked that pork absolutely perfectly. And um, they're nice and juicy, and the flavor is extremely rich. So the last thing I'm going to be doing tonight with um, my friends in Halifax is we're going to be doing a nice steak salad, which is what I love. So we're going back in here. I've been building this. I've got the two different types. Of, I've got the purple lettuce and the regular lettuce. We put some arugula in there. Um, the other thing that I'm gonna, I want to add to this salad is I'm going to add some more of that baby spinach because I want this salad to be really about the greens, but all the different greens that are in it. And then when each person gets their plate of greens, I'm going to have just a few other things with it. And one other thing That's is going to be beautiful, fresh radish. Don't take a picture of it there. Mom's grabbing, stepping and getting pictures of everything now. These beautiful local radish that I just got, I'm gonna cut those up and slice those into flat slices to go into this salad. And the reason why I'm choosing radish is, first of all, they're nice and crispy. I can cut them all up this afternoon and they'll stay nice all day. If I put certain things in a salad and it sits, it will get, um, the lettuce doesn't stay long as it sits in a day. So you can see those beautiful radish all cut up there. And the other thing that's really nice is um, I'm gonna sprinkle those through the salad and the dressing I'm gonna make is really the piece of resistance. I won't put the dressing on it, but when we finish it, this is what's gonna be going into that beautiful dressing. So right here, this is a bowl of diced. So there's about, now there's gonna be four of us for dinner. So I know that this is a, a good amount because each person is gonna get probably about a quarter of a cup of watermelon that will go on to their salad or with their salad is the way this is intended. So I've got about two cups of diced seeded watermelon. So in there, thanks mom. There's no, um, all the seeds have been removed. Actually, it was kind of nice. It was a fairly seedless watermelon that I had had. So this, this is a very, very simple dressing. The king in it is the watermelon. But if you could smell, that's mint. So what I have here, and I just picked that in my backyard. Anybody? I don't think we have. Oh, but Holly, Holly, come get some mint. If Darlene was here, I would ask her or Sammy. I have so much mint growing wild. 
in my backyard. It's crazy, isn't it, Mom? It is. We can't. She keeps giving I'll pick up, up my garbage bit. bags. <laughs> I'm giving it away in garbage bags. I think I just heard Joad make a comment. I know Joad loves mint and he uses it as teas and stuff. Oh, my scissors. Just getting my trusty scissors. So what nope, I did. Holly. What's that, Holly? I'll take some mint that gets rid of mosquitoes. You know what? Holly is right. One of the things that is great for people growing mint is it does help with the bugs. Um, what I will tell you is mint is invasive when you grow it. It will take over gardens. So I always warn, and especially lots of our newcomers that have moved into the region, um, to be careful if they plant mint. So what I have done, and this is what sometimes we call a chiffon, is I've rolled all these, I stacked the leaves and I rolled them up into a ball. And normally I would just run my, my chef's knife through it. But another great way to do that is having those trusty, as they say, a nice pair of kitchen scissors that stay for your food scissors, not for cutting everything else in your household, but for your food. And I am just going to cut these into really thin strips. If you could see almost like little ribbons, right, mom? Right. How's that smell? Just, mm. you get, all I can <laughs> smell is the mint every time I cut into those leaves. And, and mint is like basil. When you rub it, yeah. you wake up those essential oils mm. and those beautiful oils. You know, many of us sit and you can see all oh, those nice, little pieces across that. I have another piece of mint here. I'm gonna use two pieces of that yeah, right here. And then the other ingredient that I just thought would be beautiful in this, and I happen to have also an extraordinary in my backyard. Let's look at this. Is I'm gonna put some lemon thyme in it as well, which is, it's got a lemony flavor. And because the other ingredient I am going to put in here is a little bit of lemon juice. And so I'm going to put a little bit of lemon juice and a little bit of olive oil because this is a vinaigrette, but it's a little bit of a chunky vinaigrette as you see, but that's how it's intended. So this is a watermelon and mint salad that we're going to be having with this beautiful steak. And I know that my friends in Nova Scotia, it's nice with the mint. I can just sort of pull it off or the mint, the thyme, Pull it off as mom showed you many times off the sticks and it, and it's already into nice small pieces. Sure. Oh. Exactly. So there's one other piece of that mint and I am putting about seven mint leaves. So I put about 14 mint leaves in total that's going in. But remember, I do have two cups of that beautiful watermelon. So you don't need much more, the mint and that little bit of lemon thyme. I'm gonna, like I said, you're gonna see here in a second, I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil through this. And then the only other thing I'm gonna add is a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Again, so because we are making a vinaigrette. So a lot of your base in a vinaigrette has oil and vinegar. Oh my goodness, that already smells absolutely amazing. And you can imagine when I put that, everybody's gonna get a little, kind of like a little pile of this on top of their salad to have. So I'm only gonna put about three tablespoons of olive oil. I don't need a lot more than that. And I'm gonna put about two tablespoons of, and I'm not gonna, I'm using a combination of an apple cider vinegar here. You could use regular apple cider vinegar for sure. And it's going to sound funny, but I am going to put some pepper in here. So this is when some of your savory ingredients go in. And I will tell you, it makes a big difference with cracked pepper in this salad. It's the, the, the bitterness of the pepper and the sweetness of the watermelon. My good friend, Corey, from the Backyard Herbalist makes these wonderful mixtures um, with, they're all based mainly with um, vinegar. And this one has blueberries, raw organic vinegar with a little bit of maple syrup. So smells delicious. I am gonna use about two tablespoons of that that's gonna go into this recipe. As I said, you can use just a regular vinegar or a mild vinegar. So maybe a rice wine vinegar if you don't have apple cider. White vinegar would be very strong in this particular recipe. 
So that smells unbelievable. So that's going to get packed up. It'll stay refrigerated for today. And we'll be putting that over that beautiful salad, which again, as you'll see here, has all the greens that we talked about today in it. And then it's going to have those radish. And then we're going to top that with watermelon. It's going to be absolutely spectacular. Very excited about that. And then the last thing that we're going to be doing in, in here, which you're really not going to see today, is we've got a flank steak here. And I have had it marinating overnight with some of the Worcestershire. And then the other thing that's on top of it right now is a layer of paste of garlic. So that has an entire layer of garlic. And underneath here is some nice, fresh rosemary and thyme. So all I'm going to do today, so overnight I didn't add a lot of salt and pepper. So as I'm sitting here for the rest of the afternoon until I take this to barbecue tonight, I'm going to add some more fresh rosemary and some fresh thyme and a little bit of salt and pepper. And we will, I will take some nice pictures of what this beautiful flank steak looks like later. But that's what's going to be finishing with our salad. So have a look at there. And that's going to sit in the fridge. And I'm just going to hold that up. And are you excited about our beautiful, your wraps and stuff for supper? Mom, I'm leaving mom her wraps for that she's going to have for supper. She's not going to be enjoying this steak. No. Because it will be coming to Nova Scotia with me. But hopefully you can see that nice big thickness of that flank steak. And you can see all those beautiful herbs on it. And you can imagine how nice that's going to be. And when we barbecue that this afternoon, I will cut that in very, very thin slices so that everybody can have some nice slices with their steak salad. And mushrooms. And mushrooms, right? And those beautiful stuffed mushrooms. Yes, thank you, Mom. We'll hold those up as one of our final pieces. Those beautiful stuffed mushrooms with the steak salad. I have a feeling that my friends are going to enjoy our dinner tonight. What I do you think? So. I would if I was going to be there, but I'm not. But you're going to be enjoying I'm what? Going eat, I'm going to eat. Oh, yeah. I'm going to eat the lettuce wraps. She's going to eat my two of those. And her stuffed mushrooms. And so my stuffed mushrooms. She'll have I'll her forward to those. Wonderful. Hopefully you enjoyed everything today. As always, from our kitchen. To yours. To yours. Thank you so much for joining us. And we love spending the time. I'm going to see lots of people in Nova Scotia this week. So I'm excited to make my trip down there. And then we're going to be heading over to Prince Edward Island and then back to New Brunswick for some work this week. So I'm excited to do some tour across our three maritime provinces. And I have a feeling that next Sunday, I'll have some extra new ingredients to look at for our hot dogs. Because I'm going to visit my Atlantic mustard mill people when I'm in 